I do usually start honestly not knowing what to say. But for some strange reason, this morning, I've been remembering when I was a little boy at school. The chaplain at school, the chaplain in the chapel, uh, liked to say, may the words of my lips and the meditations of my heart be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord my strength and my redeemer. And I thought this morning that that's really exactly right, but now I understand it with the benefits of a long life behind me. And what really seems ever more significant is that little phrase, O Lord, my strength. And what might that mean in practice? I've been sitting here listening to this cacophony of sound arising from you all. It's a normal human situation, isn't it, talking? And yet in contrast, particularly I suppose I'm used to it, there is this background of silence, ever present. Extraordinary, isn't it? There's uh, sort of two aspects of life, the noise, the activity, and the silence, or the stillness. And both, of course, are coexistent, but we tend to live in the, act the active, the noisy part, and forget about the silence. And silence, by the way, is is also stillness, isn't it? And also space, isn't it? Where does one end and the other begin? Or they work for the same thing? Silence, stillness. Where does the silence end? Will the stillness end? Silent, stillness, space, presence, presence, freedom, peace. Aren't they all the same, really? Here and now, present, aren't they? Present if we are present. Ah, but we're not normally present, are we? What's it like when we're all talking? It's as though they don't exist, isn't it? But when we become, when we stop talking for a moment and just are present, particularly if we listen, listen, and here is the silence, and immediately all these other gifts are available to us. And what might spirit be anyway? Who knows what spirit is? Isn't that the same thing? Well, does anybody have know any better? <laughs> right here, isn't it? <clears throat> the Lord is with us. Are we with him? Think of Jesus' last words. Lo, I am with you always. It's so simple, isn't it? Utterly, utterly simple. Self-evident. Well, that's really all I've got to say, isn't it? Lord, my strength. Isn't that where whatever I've got of any use to share with you, where it comes from? 
What's John Butler got to do with it? It's no more mine than yours, it's just here, present. It fills the room, it fills the sky. Fills, fills everywhere, fills Yorkshire, fills everywhere. Where, where is it not? Extraordinary how simple it all becomes. Then this very interesting word, Redeemer. I'm not quite sure what it means. I wonder if any of you really know what it means. But I suspect it means that which makes up for all my deficiencies. All that I'm unable to do. All my failures. Because the wonderful thing was we, when we first of all realise this presence, let's call it presence, we can sink ever deeper and deeper into it. And you realise it isn't something static or dead, but actually alive. It's a living presence. Pat Patrick this morning was talking about the presence of nature spirit. The fairies and that. Well, this is just going a little bit quieter and a little bit deeper, isn't it? Into that which animates them, that which brings them into existence. And this year, there's, there's no precipitate, you see, into, from this primal, as it was in the beginning, manifest first of all in the heavenly, heavenly powers, principalities, as it's described, the angels coming down, and down, down, down into the subtleties of nature, gradually crystallise it down into what we call matter. And matter fragments into separate bodies, separate, separate objects. And this is simply just a matter of the reverse process. And you know, darling says nothing more important on this thing. You don't need to be particularly clever about it. It's just a matter of feet on the ground, listen and look. Just simple common sense, isn't it? That any child can do. Simple common sense. Nothing clever at all. What have I done to, to be in this position here? Just listened? <coughs> well, listened primarily and looked. And this whole room is packed with this presence. And you will know it's it as well as I do. And in that, Miraculously, as long as you stay there, we're complete, aren't we? Not only really unified, there's no judgment. Nothing unpleasant or threatening at all. It's total benevolence, isn't it? Or another word, love. the primal attributes that we're told of God. Total allowance, forgiveness. Because we live forgetting that forgiveness. So this redeeming, this great redeemer, well, well, perhaps forgiveness is what it's about. What does it redeem? Redeem all our foolish little ways. All that which just seems incomplete in our lives. When we, when we access this presence and can sink into it, just into the arms of love, the everlasting arms, all our little failures are made whole, aren't they? Come unto me, beloved. Come home where you belong. And that little children, we do come home and we can belong. Made whole again. 
lost sheep returning to the fold. So the Lord is called the Good Shepherd, recalling the lost children. Come home, my precious. of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight O Lord our strength and our Redeemer and indeed if we are deeply connected and at home in this present you'll find you cannot really other than reflect it it becomes not a matter of my doing anything, but rather thy will be done. Thy will, not mine. Into thy hands, O Lord. And the more we do this and practice it, the more you realize that our own efforts to get it right, without that, we rather sort of fizzle out, don't we? Because this, the higher authority, the prime authority, you see, knows best. Who knows what to do about this predicament we find ourselves in? God knows, and I do not. <laughs> and this marvelous peace may come in with this surrender to the one who knows best. When I was a little boy, my father would say, Mother knows best. And as a farmer, I learnt the great lesson that nature knows best. And I'm old. I realise God knows best of all. So I don't worry too much about clever answers to life. <laughs> Take them with a pinch of salt and smile. Keep coming back to this. And I really don't go in for anything very complicated here. I'm lucky I'm facing the window. My eyes just go so naturally to the sky, to the infinite sky. It is no better reflection of whatever it is we mean by God. This infinite expansion into thy hand. Little me surrendering to the infinite. What a relief. And I'm also in a very privileged position amongst you because I think probably I'm the oldest one present, nearest to the end and I find it absolutely marvellous because the great discovery is, you see, that body obviously gets weaker and is dying out and mind too is on its heels, <laughs> getting more forgetful, slower, but what a relief. And finally, John Butler itself just dies out. You know. But the wonderful thing is that it's a, that doesn't matter, that's just natural. But see what's left. Oh, this is it, this is it. All this problem called John, or probably Tom, Dick and Mary and all the rest of you, just naturally dies out. Isn't it most that God in his infinite mercy in this great love of God, decrees that we all die. The ultimate human blessing is that we die. What a relief. Hmm. Hmm. But what's left? Look at the twinkle in my eyes, my dears. <laughs> it's left.
And the beginning of, of the, um, all the paperwork that, that, that brought and so prepared for us was a description of a butterfly isn't it, emerging from the cocoon. And isn't it just that? It's so obvious to me now that at the end of this worldly sergeant, whatever it was for, the great school, I think now, many lessons, many tears and many lessons, finally. And all this can go back to the earth, where it came from. So, you know, as I listen to all the good intentions of good of how to deal with the world in various ways. Well, there's this recognition now that that is the world that comes to pass, the transient world, here today and gone tomorrow. Just like me, like everything, like the trees, look at the autumn leaves. It all comes to pass, doesn't it? And yet there is. Does it really matter as much as we think it does? What does it add up to? The Bible describes man like the grass, doesn't it? Grows up, flourishes for a season, dies down again, it's withered away. What are we? What is John Butler? What is any of you? Yet there is this wonderful. Is it divided? Is there a personality? Or are there millions of personalities? What happens? How many presences are there in this room? How many presences are there in this room? Obvious, isn't it? One spirit. See, division, separation, only arises when we are absent from the present, which is the primal, what's called sin. But for whatever reason my man finds himself living in separation, separate names and forms. But this presence, you see, this silence is nameless and formless, isn't it? It has no end, no limit, as we are known by our limits. And knowledge too, what is knowledge? Knowledge is all limits, isn't it? If you know something, you don't know something else. You know, if this is a horse, this is a cow, they're different, aren't they? But to come to this presence, there's only one presence, isn't there? that all these embodiments are here in essence, in spirit. In spirit, real, real spirit, not just talking about it. I'm closer and more intimately united with you than I can possibly do by holding you in my arms, aren't I? is forever. Worldly relationship, but you know, of course, when we're young, it's, we just would give half our lives to have a good relationship, but then it changes, doesn't it? It comes and it goes. But once you get a hang of this, you realise this is forever. You can rely on this, which you can't rely on anything in this world, can you? You can't rely on anything of man. We don't think our thoughts are not consistent one from one day to the next, are they? 
you think one thing one day and something else the next, changing our mind. What else can we trust? So God tells us to trust me, to trust God, to trust. Not to know God, because nobody knows what God is. Nobody knows what silence is. Or peace. Or freedom. Who knows what love is? See, all the real things in life you can't actually know. Can we? We know lesser things. We know this or that. We love matter once it's become crystallized and separated out. That's what knowledge is. So human knowledge or human wisdom is foolishness to God. What are we told to do? We're not told to know God, are we? We're told to love God. Because the heart works at a higher subtle dimension than the, the knowledge and the intellect. So to fear not to lose the mind, it's no great loss, my dear. You can live perfectly satisfactorily without it. I suspect thinking, looking at you now, quite a lot of you are nicely served, quite forgotten to think, have you? Without any effort whatsoever, your mind just naturally becomes still and quiet. And people are bending over backwards to control their minds and their feelings, aren't they? What for? Well, it's so dead simple. <laughs> Just get bored with it and turn to something else. Go back to common sense. Good old common sense, dear. You can't beat it. All the highfalutin spiritual knowledge that's floating around you. Keep it simple. God is with us and common sense is the way to find him. <laughs> <laughs>